Welcome to the Silver and Black Show, and this week's overview brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. Jim and I get you ready for a road matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. I sit down with breakout defensive end Benson Mayoa, and head coach John Gruden joins Chris Townsend in studio to break down this week's challenge of Dalvin Cook. All that and more on the Silver and Black Show, starting right now. I think they're a much improved football team. Offensively, they do a lot of uh, checking and shifting and motioning at the line of scrimmage, so we're gonna need our, our crowd very loud uh, to help us there defensively. I think they're much better. They've improved with uh, a lot of the talent that they brought in, so it should be a heck of a contest for us, and uh, we're looking forward to it. It's kind of like a 1980 or 1975 team. They've been together, you know, playing together at every level in the same system, which is uncommon. So they don't make mistakes. They don't screw around on defense. They're really good, man. Offensively, they've got a great back. You know, got to handle him. He's making big runs, man. A very creative Gary Kubiak style of running. Two young, talented receivers. And I know Cousins. Cousins is, is, is tough to deal with. When he gets hot, he's one of the best. So we got a lot of work to do. The Raiders on the road in Minnesota, both teams looking to bounce back after week two losses. Welcome to the Silver and Black Show. I'm your host, Nicole Zalumas, alongside our two-time Super Bowl champion, Jim Plunkett. And Jim, despite the losses for both teams, the Raiders and the Vikings, there were some positives to draw from. Let's start with the Vikings, Dalvin Cook, leading the league in rushing right now. How do you contain a back like that? Well, I thought the Raiders did a very good job against uh, Kansas City in, in stopping their running, running game and slowing it down quite a bit. And they, look to, they hope to do the same thing in Minnesota. I think they, they want to put the pressure on Kirk Cousins as a quarterback. He's off to a slow start. Uh, they've been relying on their running game and their defense. And uh, I think that's how the Raiders are going to approach this particular game. What changes have you seen from the defensive line from last season to now? Because they are much improved. Yeah, I think they're quicker. They're a faster defensive unit overall. They hit the seams. They disrupt the blocking schemes. And I, I think that's helping them get penetration and slowing down that run game. Now they've got to find a way to put pressure on the quarterback. Well, speaking of quarterbacks, let's look at ours, Derek Carr, because week one, he had a QBR over 100. It dropped down to 60 in, in week two. What change did you see from him from one week? Well, they're playing a, a much better football team, number one. Uh, uh, put a lot of pressure on Derek. Uh, they made him get rid of the ball sooner than he wanted to at times. And they're just a better football team than, than the Denver Broncos. Uh, but, you know, their approach and their coverage was, was excellent. And uh, Derek tr had trouble finding seems to get the ball to the receivers. He started off very hot, moving the ball down the field, uh, you know, helped by a couple of you know, phenomenal catches, I thought. But overall, uh, you know, they didn't, didn't run the ball very well. Uh, I think they've got to get back to that a little bit more and then give Derek a chance to look down the field uh, off of play action. Well, we know Derek Carr is a student of the game. He loves watching film. So what is he going to be cluing in on this week? Well, he's going to see how uh, Minnesota was able to, you know, slow down some of the – they played well against Green Bay beat up uh, Atlanta pretty well. Uh, so he's going to try to focus his in on what those two teams did against this particular team, uh, defense for Minnesota. And, you know, they're going to have a game plan. They're going to try to stick with it. Uh, and, you know, I think running the ball is also key against Minnesota. They're very good defensively. How important is it to get this first win on the road when they're going on a road trip that's this long? Uh, well, it's all, they're all important at this point. You know, it's all, only the third game of the season. They're one and one. Uh, they've got a ways to go. But, you know, you take each game separately uh, and you go out and just focus on this, concentrate on this, come away with a victory some way, somehow. I do want to circle back to Kirk Cousins because Kirk Cousins is one of those quarterbacks where you never quite know what you're going to get. Last week, obviously, he struggled. What did you see from him? He's off to a slow start. Uh, hasn't thrown the ball a whole lot. Uh, not put up great numbers. Uh, you know, I think that, that pressure him as much as they can. Uh, make him make mistakes. And I think that's one of the ways of, you know, beating this Minnesota Vikings team. All right. Well, coming up here, John Gruden is going to join Chris Townsend in the film room to break down our opponent. You know, Coach, after the game, I was in the locker room when you're talking to your team and you told your team how proud you were of their team, how hard they played as they played hard till the very end. Well, they did. I was proud the way we came out on a short week, jumped on a 10 nothing lead at the end of the first quarter. Place was rocking. And they made some plays. I give them credit for that. But our guys did not quit. A lot of young guys playing critical snaps. And, uh, you know, as a coach, you got to say it like it is. You do appreciate the effort, but there are some things we got to clean up this week. And you talk about the young players. I mean, you got a lot of young players playing a lot of snaps. Yeah, we do. You know, from Josh Jacobs at running back to Clee Farrell, who's playing end and tackle. Uh, our punter's a rookie. Uh, Foster Moreau, Hunter Renfro. Trayvon Mullen played a lot of critical snaps last week, so 
Uh, there are some young guys getting some opportunities, no doubt. And that definitely helps for the future of your team with these young guys learning to play these tough games, especially in your division. It is, and this is going to be a real test for these rookies because they get their first taste of what it's like on the road. And uh, you know, we're going to be on the road for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I look forward to spending some time with you. Yeah. Pretty unbelievable how long you'll be on the road, and we'll talk about that. But one of the good things that really happened on Sunday for Derek Carr passes Ken Stabler on the all-time uh, yards passing for Raiders history. Pretty special because obviously we know Kenny, what a great player he was. There's no doubt. And uh, to be the all-time leading passer when you think of Jim Plunkett, Daryl LaMonica, of course, Rich Gannon, uh, you put yourself in that category and to say you're number one, that pretty much summarizes the talent level of Derek Carr. One guy you're getting, you're getting a veteran back in Richie Incognito. We are. And he's a left guard. Uh, he sat out a year ago, as you know. But when you take a look at Incognito here at left guard, there's a lot of things he can do. He's very athletic for a big man. Look at this guy, Pohl. I mean, this is a guy that uh, has athleticism, has a lot of playing experience. He is one tough customer. He'll finish you now if he gets his opportunity. But to get him back playing next to Colton Miller is exciting. Again, number 64 here at left guard. He's good in pass protection. Uh, and we need that inside, no doubt. But when you want to run some screen plays and perimeter plays, it sure helps when you have a savvy left guard with this type of athleticism and pop. That's impressive, isn't it, Townie? Well, yeah, yeah, I think you were calling this game on ESPN. Yeah, I, was, I was an announcer. I feel like I'm an announcer now. <laughs> Look at incognito at left guard, pull it. That's a great finish. I love this guy. I think his temperament is really good for our team. Uh, we need this type of physical presence inside. And when Gabe Jackson comes back at right guard, we think we have a chance to be as good up front as anybody. You know, I talked to him in Arizona, and I said, you know what? You look good in that Raider uniform. And he was like, it feels good. <laughs> yeah. He's a Ra he, he looks like a Raider, feels like a Raider. He'll be one of our fan favorites, no doubt. But he's going to have his hands full. You know, he's been out for the last two weeks, hasn't been able to be in our facility. But um, we're anxious to get him going again. He's, he's been as advertised. And then I think of, you know, good, and I think of, like, the depth that you now have on the offensive line with him coming back. Well, it's, it starts with the addition of Trent Brown, certainly. You know, now Brandon Parker becomes the swing tackle. We proved against Denver and for the most part against Kansas City that Devy and Good can play guard. We just think Incognito and Gabe Jackson are two, at the, two of the very best at their position. We're happy to have them. And going to Minnesota, you know, one thing you've talked about this week and Derek's talked about is that the continuity that they have on defense is very rare in professional football these days. It really is. And when you watch them play, it allows them to make adjustments. You know, Mike Zimmer's been their coach. They've been in the same system. And when you look at, at Linval Joseph, 98, Everson Griffin, 97, you see Harrison Smith, 22, Daniil Hunter, 99, Anthony Barr, 55, and Kendricks, 54. They've been playing together, I don't know, for – Five years, six years, that is very uncommon. Then when you stick Xavier Rhodes and Trey Waynes into the picture, they have incredible continuity on defense. They know where all the snakes are. I mean, if you, if you think you have them, they know where the problems are. They can quick to adjust, and they're very good tacklers, and it's going to be a very loud atmosphere. So it'll be a challenge for us, no doubt. It kind of reminds me of when you first got into football, you had that continuity with teams with no salary cap. That's kind of what, you know, what we see here. But it's, it's very rare to have a defense stay together that long. It really is. It's uncommon. You know, it's something that I think we're all shooting for. You know, we would like to have Farrell and John Abram and a lot of these defensive players, Max Crosby, be with us for five or six years. A lot of these guys are on their second contract. So, obviously, their front office has done an excellent job making all the pieces fit. They even signed an expensive quarterback. And these two receivers are good players. So uh, they got a lot going for them. I think that's why they're in the money every year in terms of being a playoff-type team. And you know Cousins. You've known them very well. Cousins can get to you. Cousins can get to you, especially if they're able to run the ball. And they have a running back right now, Townie, this Dalvin Cook, who's hurting people bad. Uh, I believe he's the NFL's leading rusher. He's made some breakaway runs. Gary Kubiak is now their offensive coordinator. So you know you're going to get a multiple uh, – running game with two backs, one back, different sets. And if you get uh, outflanked, Dalvin Cook will punish you. And the better you are stopping the run, the more people you commit to stopping the run. And that's when Cousins 
and Stefan Diggs and Thielen become dangerous. So they're, they're a good team. You actually said you're looking forward to hearing the horn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that Viking, well, I used to coach for the Packers. So every year we go to Minnesota for a big game, and they got this, they got this guy with his horn. It's like a, oh. Ooh, it's loud, man. It's loud. It's a loud place. So we're going to go out and practice today, and we're going to have that horn. But look at all the misdirection. You see Rudolph at tight end on the right. He's going to run into the flat. Okay, then you're going to see Thielen, who motioned to the left. He's going to come back to the right. And they create a lot of misdirection. Uh, your defenders get bad eye control. And when you create a seam, this kid Cook can finish it off. This is an 80-yard touchdown run. You don't see this often in pro football, but... We got to get to work. No we doubt about it. Work to do. It's going to be a long road trip. You got a lot of road games, but you know what? You're one and one right now, and I know you're very happy with the effort you've gotten out of your your ball club. I am. I like our team. I think we're getting better and better. Obviously, we've had a couple injuries that hurt us last week against Kansas City, but uh, we've had a good start to this week of practice, and we're going to really go out and really practice in the noise today, so our guys have some sense of what it's going to be like to communicate in Minnesota. Well, we're off to Minnesota. Good luck, Coach. It's going to be a good game against the yeah. Vikings. Thanks, Tony. Won the snap it. Just got it away. Flacco in some trouble. And now he'll be dropped, and the football came out. There is a flag down as the Raiders pick it up. Oh, Mahomes has Mayoa come in on him quickly. Mayoa made some plays on Monday night. The old saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder, may ring true for veteran defensive end Benson Mayoa. After spending three seasons away from the silver and black, Mayoa returns in new form. Not only does he lead the Raiders in sacks, but his three and a half takedowns through two weeks is third most in the NFL. I sat down with Benson to find out the reason for his early success. All right, anytime. All right. Benson, you became the first Raiders player with one sack, one forced fumble in the first two games of the season. Did you know about that stat, and how can we make it three weeks in a row? No, I didn't know about that stat at all. I think how we can make it three weeks in a row, we have to stop the run. Dalvin Cook is, is, is doing his thing right now. He's on fire, so uh, if we get down there and we stop the run, that allows uh, me, Arden Key, uh, P.J. Hall, Mo Harris, Cleed to get on the field and rush the passer. Oh, big play right there by Oakland. Let's go back to when you first came into this league. You didn't even get an invite to the combine. You oh, had to wait till after college to go to the regional combines. Is that what has motivated you? That definitely playing playing for the for the name on the back of my jersey. Uh, my family uh, came from a small school, so that's a, that's a big chip on my shoulder. And uh, just to get out there and show show uh, the league what I what I got. Well, and this is the second time we've seen your name on the back of a Raiders jersey. Go back to your first stint with the Raiders, and how different is it now? Uh, my first first time being here, this is where I actually got my, my playing time. Uh, came from Seattle, um, played a lot of special teams. I came in on third down also then, but I was young. This is like my second year in the league, so this is my seventh year. So it's, it's much, much better. Uh, the understanding for the game is there, and um, I'm just going. I love how you say I was young. You're yeah, 28 years old. But I was, I was like 21, <laughs> 22 years old. You do refer to yourself as the OG of the line, though. I mean, how do you feel yeah, with some of the younger Hank, guys coming up? Me, Hank, uh, Josh, Corey. You know, we're, we, we're definitely the OGs right now, and that's kind of crazy because I never thought I would have been in that position or sitting in that seat. But, um, uh, you know, you, you just got a little more responsibility. You know, you got the young guys like Clee, uh, Max, uh, PJ still young, Mo is still young, so you know you got to help those guys uh, come along and come along fast. What advice do you give them? Just go. That's what the guys that I came up with told me. They just said just go. Klee emerged as one of those stars of Hard Knocks. Did yeah. you give him some flack nah, a little bit? Nah, nah, nah. To be honest, we we didn't even really know. We just asked like, who's mic'd up? Because right. you would just see the the camera on, you know, certain guys. And you just ask, like, who's mic'd up? Clear we mic'd up, Max we mic'd up. Coach Buckner. Coach Buckner, uh, James Cowser. It's just those guys, but it was fun. It was, is it was Coach fun. Buckner everything that we saw in Hard Knocks? Yeah. What is his oh, personality he's still acting like? The same, he's still acting the same way. He's still acting the same way. Coach Buck is cool, cool, and he's helping the guys. You know, uh, when you got a coach like that, uh, you're, you're blessed to have a coach like that as a rookie because he's telling, he's basically telling you guys what to do and how to make a play. You know, you just got to take it in and, and 
do what he tells you. You know, it's, it's a blessing to have a coach like that. And what have you taken from him compared to the younger um, guys? You know, we kind of understand more. You know, we kind of understand more because we've been we've been playing the game for so long. So when he says some, when he says something, you can kind of already see what he's saying because he's he's detailing it, and he'll detail it. He'll play the play, and it'll happen. So you know, going through that and understanding that um, comes with uh, experience in the years that you play the game. So once he says it, how, when he says it to us, we get it. You know, to the young guys, it's like, oh, dang, you know, I, I, it's kind of, it's, it's different, it's faster. That's you know? a comfortable spot to be in in any career. When did you feel like it finally clicked like that for you? Probably two years ago. Two years ago, uh, or Dallas probably, probably in Dallas. I got a lot of playing time there. So uh, that's, that's what it's all about. It's about getting experience and playing ball. On a personal note, is there someone in your life that motivates you each day? Who would you say is your biggest cheerleader? Uh, my family, my sisters, my, my brother, my pops, uh, my nephew. Who each day, I guess, prepared you to get to this moment where you are right now? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't even like playing. I didn't even really like football. Oh, uh, really? I, I just used to follow my brother. And yeah, my brother is what, who, who got me into playing football. So I used did, to just follow him in practice. What sports did you play? Uh, I played basketball. Okay. Yeah, I, I played a little. And at basketball. what point did you realize I'm not gonna make it in basketball, but I am? I just make I don't it in know. I never really just I never grew up thinking I was gonna play, be an athlete or nothing. Like we just always used to play like street football, sideline pop, and just just playing that. But you know, I got to college and I was like, all right, I can do this. And then you know, I just kept kept building the bricks, building the foundation. And so then going back to that question about not being invited to the combine. Yeah. How did you know something that maybe nobody else knew at the time? You know that uh, going against your competition, I feel like. Um, when I got there, I already knew I was the most athletic. Just seeing seeing everything, uh, the, the work I put in, um, I already knew, like, uh, it's, it's just about having that, that confidence. Like, all right, yeah, all the work that I put in, I have to know, you know, uh, I'm confident enough to do what I, what I train for, what I practice for. So that's, I was just, you know, doing what I do in doing my practice. So it's your brother that brought you into the sport. Yeah. Was there a favorite athlete growing up? I'm assuming it wasn't watch, a football no, player. No, I didn't watch, oh, oh, athlete Kobe, yeah. of course. Kobe. <laughs> oh, of course, I yeah, should, I Inglewood. should. Yeah, well, you are Kobe from Mike. Inglewood, that's yeah. true, from yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah. And is Kobe still what you would consider the greatest of all time he's, in he's any sport? The, well, it goes Jordan, Kobe, then LeBron. Wait, it goes Jordan, Kobe, Kobe LeBron. Yeah. Okay, but Kobe was your guy. Yeah, Kobe was my guy. That's who I grew up watching, Kobe and Shaq. Now we are hitting the road on a very long road trip. Mm. You're not gonna be back at the Coliseum for 49 days. How do you mentally prepare yourself for that? Um, it's a football game. You know, if we're not, you, you gotta be ready. It's no, it's no, you know, the preparation is now during the week. You know, we're gonna be here pre uh, preparing, so it's all about the preparation and the work that we put in on the field. You know, we, everybody plays in the way game, so. We just got a few in a row, but then we get come back home. So we gotta do what we have to do on the road. You know, we have to get a, get a win, scratch and claw for wins, and hope, hopefully, you know, we get it. Well, one Hopefully's of those road game. games happens to be across the pond in oh, London. Yeah. How yeah. different is it playing over there when it comes to the fans, the food, the hotel? I, I went on the first London trip, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, 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 it's a lot of Raiders fans out there. It's the Raiders fans everywhere, actually, but. Um, same thing, you know. You have to scratch and crawl for win. That's in the, you know, that's in the way game for the, for the Bears too. So, you know, we have to do what we got to do. So overall, looking at the silver and black right now, how confident are you in this team? Oh, I'm very confident. I feel like we have a lot of talent everywhere, everywhere. Offense, they're loaded. Defense, we're loaded. So, we just have to put it all together. It's week two, so we're going to week three. So, you know, we just gotta, we gotta gel the team and, and, and get it, get it rolling. Well, we talked about it since uh, the OTAs. You know, it's, it's going to be a challenge, no doubt. Um, but we're going to rely on our veteran leadership and our young guys' passion to play. You know, we're just going to go out there and uh, compete on a down-by-down -down basis. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not worried about things we can't control, like the schedule and what time the game is played or which time zone it's in. We just got to play better and do it for four quarters.
Welcome back to the Silver and Black Show. The Raiders hit the road starting in Minnesota, and they won't be back at the Coliseum for 49 days. I think road trip is kind of an understatement when it comes to this stretch, Jim. Oh, oh without question. I've never heard of being on the road that long. That's it, it, really tough on any football team. I don't care who they are. Uh, and it, it does seem a little bit unfair. How do you prepare your team for a stretch like this? I know it's always one game at a time, but I mean, you're looking at it. We have Vikings, Colts, then they go across the pond for a week five matchup right. against the Bears. They have a week off, if you even want to call it that. And then they're back to take on the Packers and Texans. And those are all long, long trips. There's no question about it. But, you know, they've got to find a way to do it. You know, it is what it is right now. Uh, and some teams do better on the road. You'll, you, we don't know yet. It's early in the season, but we'll find out. What were your biggest challenges back in the day? I know times have changed, but you still travel with the team when you take a road trip like this. Well, you know, you're staying in strange hotels. Uh, time changes are, are a factor. Uh, preparation, getting ready. You got a short week at home, then you get there and maybe you do a walkthrough in the hotel nowadays. Uh, so it, it's a little harder uh, to win on the road, I think. But, you know, preparation is key, and, and that's what they're going to do. All right, Jim. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Silver and Black Show. On behalf of John Gruden, Chris Townsend, Jim Plunkett, and all of us here at Silver and Black Productions, thanks for watching, and go Raiders!